of worship. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great privilege to gather here tonight to worship you. To gather here tonight to lift up our voice in praise and worship. Lord, may our prayers, may our worship, may our praise be acceptable before you tonight. Lord, we thank you for the victory of tonight. Lord, we thank you that whatever we bound will remain bound in heaven. Whatever we lose tonight shall be lost in the name of Jesus. I pray tonight for everyone who will be part of this service. You will not settle for less than what God has for you. And every spirit that causes people to run ahead of God, tonight we will defeat that spirit in your life. The grace to wait on God's promise. The grace to wait and receive that which God has promised. Tonight, may the Lord empower you and I to receive such grace in the name of Jesus. Tonight, every weapon fashioned against you, the Lord Almighty shall give you victory over them. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, we ask that you will help us tonight. Lord, cleanse us of every sin. Cleanse us of everything that will hinder our prayers tonight. Lord, in every way we have sinned today, in every way we have grieved your spirit, Lord, we pray for mercy. We pray that our shortcomings, our sin, will not be a hindrance to our breakthrough tonight. Almighty God, please help us tonight. Help us to pray true. Help us to be victorious in the place of prayer. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. God bless you. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. I want to welcome you all tonight to our prayer meeting. Um, I want to welcome those of you joining us online. It's going to be a great night. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight we have two segments of prayer. We're going to go through with the first one and then we get a little bit more intense in the second phase. Genesis chapter 16, verse 1 to 6. Genesis chapter 16, verse 1 to 6. And then Exodus chapter 32, verse 1 to 8. Genesis chapter 16, verse 1 to 6. Now... Sarai, Abraham's wife, had not been able to bear children for him. But she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarah said to Abraham, The Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abraham agreed with Sarah's proposal. So Sarah's Abraham's wife took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abraham as wife. This happened 10 years after Abraham had settled in the land of Canaan. So Abraham had sexual relationship with Hagar and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress Sarai with contempt. Then Sarah said to Abraham, 
This is all your fault. Wow. Wow, wow. I put my servant in your arms. <laughs> but now that she's pregnant, she treats me with contempt. The Lord will show who's wrong. The Lord will show who's wrong. Who's wrong? You or me? <laughs> Interesting. Abraham replied, Look, she's your servant. So deal with her as you see fit. Then Sarai treated Hagar so harshly that she finally ran away. Amen. Amen. Exodus 32 verse 1 to 8. When the people saw how long it was taking Moses to come back down to the mountain, they gathered around Aaron. Come on, they said. Make us some gods who can lead us. We don't know what happened to this fellow Moses. Who brought us from the land of Egypt? So Aaron said, Take the gold rings from the ears of your wives and your sons and daughters and bring them to me. All the people took the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. Then Aaron took the gold, melted it down, and molded it into a shape of a calf. When the people saw it, they exclaimed, O oh, Israel, these are the gods who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Aaron saw how excited the people were. So he built an altar in front of the calf. Then he announced, tomorrow will be a festival to the Lord. The people got up early the next morning to sacrifice bond offering and peace offering. After this, they celebrated with feasting and drinking. And they indulged in pagan rivalry. The Lord told Moses, quick. Go down the mountain, your people, whom you brought from the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. How quickly they have turned away from the way I commanded them to live. They have melted down gold and made a calf. And they have bowed down and sacrificed to it. They are saying, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. May the Lord bless the reading of his word tonight. My brothers and my sisters, I want to say very quickly to everyone who is listening. God will fulfill his promises for your life. God will fulfill his promises for your life, but you must patiently wait for it to manifest. God is faithful. Are you patient? When it comes to God's will, there are no shortcuts. Amen. When it comes to the will of God, there are no shortcuts. As we look unto God to perfect that which concerns us this month and beyond, we must wait for it patiently, prayerfully, and not hurriedly. 
Psalm 27 verse 13 says, Still I am certain to see the goodness of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 16 verse 1 to 6, Sarah brought a proposal that God has not allowed me to be pregnant. Even though we are waiting on God for a blessing of a child. But it appears God is taking too long to move. It appears God is taking too long to release his blessing. I have an idea. I'm going to give you my maid. Sleep with her. Maybe God will hear us through her. Tell your neighbor, nobody can help God. Tell someone else, nobody can help God. Any attempt to help God brings complication. He said, maybe God will hear our prayer through her. God will never stop you from making plan B. But be ready to face the consequences of plan B. So they went and with the proposal, it sounded good to Abraham. Abraham said, let's go. Bam, 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 bam. Hagar became pregnant. And before you know it, she became saucy. She became arrogant. And then Sarah got jealous. She created the problem. She caused the fire. And then she's upset. And God is watching them implement plan B. God wants you and I to understand that he is a faithful God. Amen, church? He is a faithful God. God will bring to pass his word in your life. You have to be patient. Amen, church? Fast forward. Exodus 32. They said, this Moses, this Moses, we don't know where he has gone. We don't know if he will ever come back. They were waiting for him to come back and maybe you're here tonight or listening online. You're waiting on God to move in your life and the devil is whispering to your ears, are you sure God will do this thing? Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? God may not do it. You know, you've been waiting for long. He may not do it. You might as well take a chance. You might as well just because God, God, God is busy. God is busy. Time is going. Devil will come to you. Time is going. God is busy. Time is going. Why don't you try this one? Why don't you try this plan B? And God will be looking at you. But, but you started believing God for a blessing. And all of a sudden, the devil begins to whisper too many things into your ears. To second guess God. To second guess the promises of God. The devil begins to whisper, why don't you try this thing? Why don't you try this option? Why don't you, why don't you, why don't you? It's taking too long. If God was going to do it, he would have done it. It's taking long. Try this. 
God didn't say if you eat it, if you eat the apple. He didn't say. He just says that. He, he, God, God, God didn't tell you that. God, that wasn't what God meant when he said don't eat from the tree. And I pray tonight every plan of the enemy to talk you out of God's promise for your life. May God give you grace tonight to stand and overcome in the name of Jesus. They said to Aaron, they put Aaron under pressure. We need something. We need someone else. This Moses, this fellow, we don't know where he is. We need another God. We need plan B. We need plan B because plan A is taking too long. My brothers and my sisters, plan A is God's plan. It may not come when you want it, but plan A is still the best plan. The psalmist says in Psalm 27 verse 13, still I remain confident of this. Psalm, Psalm 27 verse 13, please. I remain confident. Say, yet, I am confident. Somebody say, I am confident. No matter how long it has taken, I am confident. That's where God wants us to be. That place of confidence. I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness. While I'm here in the land of the living, that means I will not die until God's promise come to pass. The psalmist says, I am confident of this. I will see the goodness of God. Are you confident that you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living? Be patient with God and with yourself. One of life's frustration is that God's timetable it's really the same as ours. That's one of life's frustration. God's timetable is not the same as our timetable. We are often in a hurry when God isn't. You may feel frustrated with the slow progress you're making in life. Remember that God is never in a hurry. He's always on time. He will use the entire, your entire lifetime to prepare you for a role in eternity. He will use our entire lifetime to prepare us for a role in eternity. The Bible is filled with examples of how God uses long process to develop character. Especially for leaders. It took 80 years to prepare Moses. 80 years. Including 40 in the wilderness. Moses kept waiting and wondering. Is it time yet? But God kept saying, not yet. Be patient with the process. Be patient with the process. James advised us in James 1 verse 4. Don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work. So you can become matured and well developed. So, so, so let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, 
you will be perfect and complete needing nothing. Needing nothing. If you step out before time, you will always need something. Be patient. I don't know how many of you you are a lover of chicken party. Wait. Be patient. And you went to taste this. All your life you have ate chicken party. You went to taste this. They told you chicken party 10 more minutes. And when you look at the tray, it's beef patty, cocoa bread. You are hungry. You look at people picking their patty and leaving. They told you 10 minutes. Some of us, after two minutes, say cashier. <laughs> two beef party, please. <laughs> I can't wait for ten minutes. But what you really wanted is chicken party. As you took the beef party and you're going, you're eating it. Chicken party is on your mind, but beef party is in your mouth. You just needed 10 minutes. And you would have received what you really wanted. You need an Isaac. You don't need an Ishmael. Amen, church? Amen, church? Because don't settle for less because you can't wait. In Jesus' name. Don't get discouraged. When Habakkuk became depressed because he didn't think God was acting quickly enough, God had this to say to him. Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3. Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3 says... These things I plan won't happen right away. This vision, let me read this version. These things I plan won't happen right away. Slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair. For these things will surely come to pass. For the vision is yet pointed time. But at the end, it will speak. At the end, you will share the testimony. But it is for an appointed time. It will not lie. Though it tarries. You're waiting on God to release an open door in your direction. It looks as if it's tarrying. It looks as if it's too slow. Don't it tarry. What should you do? Wait for it. Don't it tarry. Wait for it. Don't it's taking Sarah too long to get pregnant. She said, no, I can't wait anymore. I need baby now. I need baby now. I need a baby now. And said, okay, this is how I'm going to get the baby. She walked out a way to get it. 
and she got it, it wasn't full satisfaction. It came with problems. It came with difficulties. It came with annoyance. It came with frustration. Plan B is not the best plan for us. Amen, church. Amen, church. They said they couldn't wait on Moses anymore. We need this God. We need to see a God. How come we can't see this God? How come Moses is gone? We don't know where he is. We need something to look at. Yes, we have something to look at. It's God. The thing is that we, we, we want something tangible to look at. We want, the, we, we want to see physical manifestation right now so that we know that God is real. Even when you don't see physical, God is still real. Amen, church. God is still what? Real. God's plan for your life, my life, is motivated by his wisdom. In other words, God knows what is best for you. God's plan for your life, my life, is motivated by his wisdom. God's plan for your life is motivated by his love. God knows the plans he has for us. God's plan for your life involves his perfect timing. God's perfect timing does two things. It grows our faith as we are forced to wait and trust God. It grows our faith. And it makes us certain that only he alone gets the glory and the praise for pulling us through. The psalmist says in Psalm 31 verse 15, My times are in your hands. At the right time, God will provide your solution. Amen, church? Amen. What motivates us to get ahead of God? These are some of the things we're going to pray about tonight. What are the things that motivate us to get ahead of God? Number one, the intensity of our desire. The intensity is too intense. I need it bad. I need to get it now. Like, 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 what's her name? Um, Rebecca. Give me a child or I will die. The intensity of our desire. Another thing that motivates us to go ahead of God is wrong thinking. Wrong thinking. Wrong thinking. Another thing that motivates us to go ahead of God is pressure from other people. Pressure from other people will make you do what you don't want to do. Another thing that motivates us to get ahead is impatience. Another thing that motivates us to get ahead of God is pride. Another thing that motivates us to get ahead of God is selfishness. My brothers and my sisters, the consequences of going ahead of God is disappointment. Is disharmony and is missing out on God's best for your life. When God makes a promise, faith believes it, hope anticipates it, patience waits quietly for it. When God makes a promise, faith believes it. Do you believe that you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living? That despite what you see physically, do you honestly believe that you will see the goodness of God? 
Faith believes it. Hope anticipates it. And patience wait quietly for it. Let's rise up on our feet as we pray. Tonight, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord will give you strength to wait upon his promises. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. I want you tonight to lift up your voice to God in prayer. And say, Father, help me to stay patient. Help me to stay patient. Even when I don't see a trace of what is in stock for me. Help me to stay patient. Help me to be patient. Help me to be patient, oh God. Grace to remain patient. The psalmist says, I waited patiently on the Lord. I waited patiently. We need grace to be patient. Grace to be patient. Sarah ran out of patience. The Israelites ran out of patience. They took matters into their own hands. Pray, Lord, give me the strength to wait upon your promises. To wait upon your promises, Lord. I will not allow the voice of the enemy... To encourage me to entertain plan B. Lord, help us tonight. Strength to wait upon your promises, Lord. You will not build a golden calf. You will not build a golden calf. You will not try to find God in anything else. Grace to be patient. Grace to be patient, oh God. So that we not miss out on that best plan. Jeremiah 29 says, I know the plans I have for you. I know. Be patient. Grace to be patient. Romans 8 verse 25 AV please. Romans 8:25. It says, but we hope for what we do not see. We eagerly wait with what? For what you don't see, you wait for it. Faith believes it. Hope expects it. But we hope for what we do not see. I have not seen it physically, but I'm hoping for it. Because I know God is not a liar. In the name of Jesus. I'm hoping for it. Say, Lord, help me to wait patiently. For the fulfillment of your word. In my life. Open your mouth and pray. We need the grace of patience. The grace of patience. To wait patiently for the fulfillment. 
of God's word in our lives. Pray tonight. Say, Father, I reject every spirit of agitation and anxiety that causes people to take matters into their own hands. I reject every spirit of agitation, every spirit of anxiety that causes people to take matters into their own hands. Begin to reject it in your life. I reject every spirit of agitation, anxiety. The children of Israel said, make us a God. We're tired of waiting. We're tired of waiting for this Moses. That is the spirit of agitation. The spirit of anxiety. They took matters into their own hands. Yes, Lord, we reject that spirit of agitation. The spirit of anxiety, the Bible says, we must be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But with prayer, with supplication, make your request known to God. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. That which God has said in his word will come to pass. Yes, in the name of Jesus. We reject that spirit of agitation. That spirit of anxiety. That causes people to take matters into their own hands. In Jesus name we have prayed. The Bible says Samuel commanded Saul to wait for him for seven days. On the seventh day, Saul became anxious. Saul was agitating. He said to the people, get me the stuff. I will perform the sacrifice. Because Samuel is nowhere. The Bible says, as soon as he finished, Samuel showed up. And when Samuel should have asked him, so what have you done? You know what his response was? He said, it's not my fault. I saw the people scattering around me. I saw that people were becoming anxious. I don't know what to do. And I took matters into my own hands. I pray tonight for each and every one of us. That spirit of agitation that causes people to disobey the word of God. I pray that spirit will not function in your life. It will not function in your family. In the name of Jesus. As a result of that, Saul lost his kingship. Because he couldn't wait. He couldn't wait on God. He couldn't wait on God. That voice that tells you that time is running out. We cancel that voice. It's not of God in the name of Jesus. That voice that is instigating you to disobey God. That voice that is instigating you to go contrary to God's word. We silence that voice tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is the voice of the devil. This fellow Moses, we don't know what has become of him. Moses, the man the Bible described as the meekest man on earth. 
the only man who told God to repent. No one else dare try it. I want you tonight. Look, I want you to picture Moses as that word of God you have received. That promise of God you have received. And you believe it. But manifestation is taking long. And this voice comes and say, this word you are standing on, are you sure it's for you? Why don't you try something else? Are you sure the interpretation of that word really fits your circumstance? And tonight, the grace to wait and receive. May God release upon your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. While waiting, your strength will not fail you. Because God will always renew your strength. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, deliver me from the temptation of plan B while waiting on you. Deliver me, Father, from the temptation of plan B while waiting on you. The sin of golden calf will not be your portion. I said the sin of golden calf will not be your portion. The Ishmael's sin will not be your portion. In the name of Jesus. You see, every attempt to help God will always result in destiny complication. And I pray tonight, just as Habakkuk said, though it tarries, wait. Though it tarries, wait. The Bible said, those who wait on the Lord, The only time your strength will not be renewed is when you wait on man. When you wait on God, your strength will be renewed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I have not asked the house of Jacob to seek me in vain. Tonight I pray that which is in your heart, as you patiently wait for it, under God, it will reach your hands. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, you have waited so long knowing that God is faithful. When God brings to pass what he has promised you, you want to be in a place whereby you can be paying attention to Isaac and not paying attention to Ishmael at the same time. Are you listening, church? Because it will take away your strength. It will take away all that you need to put into Isaac, you start dividing yourself. You will say to yourself, ah, Isaac, what a perfect blessing. I wish I just waited for you alone. But, on one hand, I smile. On the other hand, Ishmael reminds me 
of my bad judgment. Wouldn't you want to be in a place where you can just love Isaac? Where you can just enjoy the blessing of God and don't have to think of any other sorrow. Amen, Amen church. Amen. Say, Father, help me to wait for you. Your plan for my life is the best plan in the name of Jesus. Beloved, God's plan is the ultimate plan. There is no better plan. Amen, church? There is no better plan. And the dangerous aspect of it is God would not stop you. I wish God just, God, I wish God just decided that, okay, Sarah, you're trying to circumvent my plan. Okay, okay, Eger, go to Abraham. And they did what they did. No pregnancy. God allowed it. You wish, you, you wish, you wish Sarah never got pregnant. So that whatever they were planning didn't work. So that they can just get what God, God just allowed them to do what they are doing. That is the dangerous part of it. That is the dangerous part of it. That when you're talking about plan B and doing what you're doing, and just remember that God will not stop you. But the faithfulness of God that is always true, he will bring to pass what he has promised you, but you're going to have to manage that error. Tonight, grace to wait patiently. He who has promised is faithful. His faithfulness is forevermore. Our God is faithful. Even when it appeared that Abraham's skin, Abraham's body was worthless, there was nothing working. God still brought Ishmael to help us understand that don't put yourself under unnecessary pressure. I am God. Anytime I do it is good. Anytime I do it is what? Good. The people you are looking at who are getting ahead of you and you're putting yourself under pressure, listen, by the time God answers your prayer, the people who got it before you, listen, their own will not be better than your own. So get rid of that pressure and keep your eyes on God. The perfect gift comes from God. You realize that when God answers your prayer, you have not missed anything. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father. The grace to wait. You have promised you will never fail. Your faithfulness is forevermore. Your faithfulness is forevermore. You have promised he will never fail. Just worship the Lord tonight. As you build within you that grace to remain patient, he will never fail. He is faithful. He is forevermore. Raise up your two hands and say, Father, I receive deliverance from every spirit of agitation. I receive deliverance. 
from every spirit of holy. those hands together for a God who is faithful. He will never fail. He will never fail. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Your promises for us are yea and amen. Thank you, Lord, the God who watches over his word to bring them to pass. We receive that grace to be patient in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. You may take your seat. Thank you. Praise him. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 6. We want to pray on the second phase. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 6. It says, For we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Somebody say mighty. mighty. They are mighty in God for pulling down strong holds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity. Christ. Six. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete. The mind is the battleground of the devil against the believer in Christ. If the devil can succeed in making the believer to buy into his lies and deception through the mind... He will then proceed in using fear as his major weapon to cripple the fate of such a person. Amen. So Satan uses the fear of the unknown and the lack of spiritual understanding which has been built in the mind of such a believer to come out against him or her. The enemy only fears the believer in Christ who can identify his spiritual position, his authority over him. He's even more fearful of the believer in Christ who is able to use that position and authority effectively against him. Beloved, 
The enemy does not want us to remember who we are in Christ Jesus. He does not want you to be able to walk in that reality, in that truth. And tonight, we're taking authority. I say we're taking authority. Rise up on your feet tonight. Isaiah 54 verse 17. Isaiah 54 verse 17. Isaiah 54 verse 17 says what? Isaiah 54 verse 17 said, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. How many of you believe that tonight? That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I condemn. That is authority. And tonight we're going to walk in authority. Tonight I want you to declare over your life, over your family, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against my family shall prosper. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Every power, every principality forming weapon against you they shall not prosper they shall not prosper they shall not prosper they will not prosper declare over your life tonight no weapon formed against me shall prosper in the name of Jesus every tongue that rises up against me in judgment I condemn For the remaining part of this year, 2021, every weapon that is formed against you, none shall prosper. None shall prosper. Weapon of sickness, it will not prosper. Weapon of evil imagination, they will not prosper. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every weapon that form against you, they shall not prosper. Weapon of lack will not prosper. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, casting down every imagination. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty. Mighty through God. And pull down strongholds. Tonight, I want you to pray. Say, Father, I pull down every evil imagination against my destiny. I pull it down. I pull it down. Every evil imagination Against my destiny. I pull it down in the name of Jesus. I pull them down in the name of Jesus. Evil imagination. Evil imagination. In the heart of people. I pull them down. I pull them down. I pull them down. The weapons of my warfare are not canal. They are mighty. They are mighty. They are mighty, pulling down of strongholds. I pull down every evil imagination. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In 
In Jesus' name we have prayed. When people look at you and, and, and imagine that you don't succeed, it's an imagination that must be pulled down. When people look at you and just wish your story don't change, it's an imagination that must be pulled down. When people look at you and feel that you're being too blessed, it's an imagination that must be pulled down. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil projection against your destiny, we pull them down. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Maybe you have told somebody about a health condition that you have. And you think they are praying for you. But you don't know that it's contrary. Anyone who wish that you don't get well. May God frustrate their ambition. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We pull down strongholds. You are going about your life. Working hard. Minding your business. And people are wishing that you don't succeed. Tonight in the name of Jesus. Every evil projection over your destiny. We command them to catch fire. 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 We command the fire of God. The fire of God. Listen, church. Listen, church. When Nadab and Abihu imagined evil against Moses and Aaron. The ground opened. And they are gone. Tonight, every evil projection against you, against your family, I command the fire of God right now. To frustrate every such agenda in the name of Jesus. In the mighty 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 name of Jesus. Everyone wishing for you to carry evil loads. May that evil load be transferred to their shoulders. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Ephesians 6:16. 6, Look at a revelation there. Ephesians 6:16. 6, We're taking authority tonight. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The days of finger finger Christianity is over. Ephesians 6, 16 says, above all, take the shield of what? Faith. With which you will be able to do what? Quench. All the fiery darts of the what? Get one. Even the Bible knows that there are fiery darts of the wicked one. Tonight, Every fiery dart that is directed in your direction. You see, everyone mentioning your name with evil and ungodly intention is called a fiery dart. In case you don't know what a dart is, you throw it. 
with sharp edge. Tonight, I destroy every fiery dart that is sent in your direction. Everyone mentioning your name with evil and ungodly intention. May God return the fiery dart to them in the name of Jesus. Beloved, every evil wisher in your life, every evil wisher in your life shall be judged by the finger of God. The God who judged Haman will judge your enemies. Those who desire your downfall shall see you move higher. Every tongue discussing you in secret shall be put to shame in public. In the name of Jesus. Ephesians 6, 17. Another sword. Ephesians 6, 17, please. 17. And take the helmet of what? Salvation. And the sword. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And use it against who? The enemy. The sword of the spirit. Tonight, that sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He said, every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I condemn. The words that you will use to condemn those tongues, they will not be far from your mouth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You have come too far for evil mouth to pull you down. Hallelujah. Say, Father, I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am redeemed from poverty. I am redeemed from sickness. I am redeemed from hopelessness. I am redeemed from every walk of darkness. Galatians 3 verse 13. Galatians 3 verse 13. Galatians 3 verse 13 says Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law having become a cause for us for it is written cause is everyone who hangs on a tree Amen, church. Amen, church. So we are redeemed from spiritual debt. Amen, church. We are redeemed from spiritual debt because Christ has taken it for us. Every evil tongue against your destiny is a time waster. Amen, church? Amen. Is a time waster. Amen. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, as I begin to close, it says, But you belong to God, my dear children. How many persons belong to God here tonight? My dear children. You have already won a victory over those people. 
over those people. Why? Because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Hallelujah! Say, Father, I overcome all because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I overcome all. Every challenge, every enemy opposition, you will overcome in Jesus' name. I overcome all. Overcome all. All. I overcome. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. The only time you will defeat me is when you can defeat God. Because he's already in me. In Jesus name. I want you to thank God tonight. Thank the almighty God. Thank him, thank him tonight. Our heavenly father, we thank you. Victory belongs to you, Father. Victory, victory belongs to you. We thank you for the grace to pray tonight. We thank you for the confidence we have in the place of prayer. Victory belongs to you. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. Absolutely no one. Anybody fighting you is wasting time. Because God on your side... Victory will always be yours in the name of Jesus. Who can stand? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus.